Hey, this is Jay Goodison from Encodian. So again, we're going to continue our series on our utility actions. And today we're looking at how to pass a HTML table. Um, I'm going to work through a bit of a specific scenario here. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to take uh, the Premier League table, uh, which is the uh, football league uh, within the UK. Um, we're going to take the, the league table and all the information contained within it. So the teams, uh, how they've played. And I'm gonna, I know underneath the hood that this is actually is a table structure. So if I look at the HTML, it's a table, collection of TDs, TRs, so on and so forth. I wanna take that data and I'm gonna parse it and I'm gonna add it into this SharePoint list here. So I've got the teams played, won, drawn, lost, so on and so forth. So what I'm gonna do, I've got a flow here. I'm just gonna manually trigger the flow. Obviously I could have another trigger, but I'm just gonna manually trigger it for now. The first thing I'm gonna to need to do is actually get hold of this data. So um, to do that, I'm going to use the HTTP connector and I'm going to issue a web request. So we'll take HTTP and I need to do a get request uh, and I need to pass in the URL to the web page holding that, uh, that table that we want to grab the data from. The next thing we're going to do is add the Encodium parse HTML table action. So there we go there. And you'll notice here what we can do is I can pass it a file or I can pass it the data. So all I actually need to do is pass it the data that's passed back from this HTTP action, which in essence is basically the entire web page um, and all the HTML contained within it. So there is an interesting point. So I'll just click see more and pass in the body. The way that this action works, it will look for by default the first table it finds in the HTML that you provide. So you don't just need to pass it the HTML table and that's it. You can pass it a complete HTML file representation of a web page. It will simply look for the first HTML table that it finds. Or alternatively, you can actually specify an ID or an index. So I could say, you know, go and find me the third table contained, for example, or the ID of the HTML table. So if the HTML table that you're targeting has got an ID attribute with a specific name, you can use that to target it as well. So I am i don't need to set any of those advanced features, that's all fine. Um, what I do need to do before I do anything further, I'm going to need to, to run this action and I'll show you why. What, what this action does is it returns the data as JSON. So to use the data that comes back from the action, I'm going to need to parse that JSON and to parse that JSON, I need to generate a schema, but I can't generate the schema because I don't have any sample data to actually do that with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm just going to do test and manually run this quickly. And that's going to run through for me. So it's going to retrieve the data from the H from the endpoint that I've specified, which is the website URL here. And if I look in the outputs, what we should see is the is that body there is the HTML data of that web page and somewhere in there there's going to be the data table that I'm interested in. So if I go to the uh, utility parse HTML table, we can see the inputs and also we can see the outputs. So what I'm interested in is this data here because this is the data that effectively I need to parse. So let me just do a control A, control C. I'm going to pop this into notepad so we can see it. So here is the data that's been scraped from that web page. And what we'll do is we'll just do format the JSON. So we can now see that that's the data that's been pulled back from the first table that it's found, which is exactly what we want. So what we'll do, I can use this to generate the schema. So if I click edit, and I'm going to go parse JSON, JSON even, and the content, we well, may as well set this up also here. So the parse JSON we're gonna, we're gonna parse is the results coming from the parse HTML table, that's fine. It's asking me for the schema, and I'll do generate from sample, click done. Now, I know there's a bit of a problem with this schema because I, I have tested this flow before I'm showing you how to build it. Um, namely, so again, let me pop this into, into, power, in, sorry, into notepad so we can have a look at what's been defined. So the schema that gets generated is quite interesting. It always does this where it says these columns are required. Well, actually, I can take that off because I'm not, I don't need to enforce that those columns have always got data. The other thing um, that I need to watch out for is by default, Power Automate will say, oh, the type is of type string if it's, if it's found data that's always present. Now, 
I know that there's potential in this particular table for some of those values not to be present. So it could be a null value. Now, if I send in a null value, then effectively this schema will break because it's saying it can't be null, it has to be a string. So it's a really simple fix. Um, what I'm gonna do, is I'll just bring this back. All of these entries here, which have got type string, I'm just gonna change them, oh, sorry. I'm just gonna change the string to an array, so it could be string or null. So I can just pop through here and just correct all of these. So this just means that if, if, if there is a null value that's present, it's not gonna break the flow and it will still continue to work. Likewise, I'm not saying that the, that the actual data themselves is, uh, is mandatory, if you would. I'm just saying, if the property's there, let me use it. Right, so let's just control like that, control, there we go. So we've got our schema now, which means we can start to build our flow. And what we want to do is we want to create a list item in this SharePoint table here. So what we'll do next is we'll do create item and we'll see the next ism. And I've got, again, I've got a little bit of a cheat around for it. So I'm just going to select a demo SharePoint site that we've got here called PDF demo. And the list name I'm after is called Premier League table. So, um, you can see here that it's now showing me all of the, the bits I'm interested in. Now, you'll notice when I select title, now behind the scenes, I know that title field is the, um, is actually been renamed, so it's the default, but I've called it team, but behind the scenes, it's the, the shame old ism of SharePoint, it's called title here. Um, if I look at the parse JSON action, um, oh, bear with me a moment. So, okay, so that's reminded me, I've just had a quick look to remind myself what's gone wrong there. Um, you'll notice I can't see any of the properties coming from the past JSON action, and that's because I've done things in the wrong order here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna restore the schema that was generated from the sample. So that's with the type set to string. Now the reason for that, is so that I can do this. Now I've changed that schema, I will be able to select these columns. Now there is another slight ism here that I sort of alluded to before. Um, where you've got column one, column two, column two. I know these SharePoint columns are of type string. Um, so I can select team there, for example, and that's going to pop it into an apply to each because, of course, it's an array of items being returned back. But you notice when I say select played or one, I can't actually see. Um, and that is because even if I do int and try and then select that dynamic data, I still can't see it particularly well. Um, and that's because the 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 data behind this list, that's a, of a type, uh, a SharePoint column of type number, 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 and it's a string, so it won't show it to me. The easiest thing, I think, really to do this is I could just do this. I could just do played one, drawn, lost, four, and points, and I can literally control copy, and I just do that, because it's nice and quick, and I don't need to worry about it, and I know that'll work. And I can get rid of those. And I can do the same there for played. Um, oops, sorry, got rid of the wrong one there tonight. Let's do that again. So on and so forth. So you get the idea. A bit of a hack, but it just means messing with the data types is a bit easier this way. There's probably a cleaner way to do it, but this is my workaround, <laughs> if that's valid. Um, okay, quit lost. One more to do in terms of the points. Okay, last one. Now, what I'm, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna return the actual schema that I've had before. So, albeit this might look a bit hacky, it's not. It's just the way that the UI works in the Power Automate. I can restore that string, um, sorry, that schema that now allows the string and null values. Um, it just means that I won't be able to pick up those properties in dynamic data, but they will, be, they will work absolutely fine because of course the data is contained in, in the, the actual data that's been sent backwards and forwards between the actions. So now, when I run this flow, if I click test, uh, I'll just manually test this again, kick this off. We should get a run all the way through. So we'll get the HTML table parsed from the uh, data that's been returned by HTTP action. Um, we're parsing the action, it's gonna loop through now and we're gonna get entries into that table and I should, if um, that's me from earlier, so let me just remove that one out. But we should see, this will refresh the page now. There we go. There's those um, entries that have been added so we can see there's the lead table and all the data that's been scraped from the web page. So 
Um, I appreciate some of those steps are a little bit, um, I guess, disjointed, uh, the way that I've manipulated the schema uh, and the way that I've been able to select the data. But that's more to do with the way that the Power Automate UI works more so than anything. But hopefully gives you a good example of how you can take, you know, any web page that contains a table, you can point uh, HTTP connector at it, you can get the data back out, and then you can parse it and do something with it within Power Automate. Um, if you have any questions regarding how to use this action um, or any other encoding action, you can email us at support at encoding.com or you can, of course, check out the documentation on the support portal, which is support.encoding.com.